here is a fair amount of tear out with this this um, ply but I don't mind doing a fair amount of sanding it's just the issue with um, the way the game is played it requires a fairly not so fairly isn't it it requires a flattish edge to be balancing on so that's something to think about and I've got some internal cuts kind of for detail and things but I'm mainly going to be doing kind of detail with paint rather than getting very complicated with this because I'm not quite that good so yeah I'm gradually working my way through the shapes here um, it's 30 shapes per game and I've got three games to do plus the game boards so it's going to be an interesting afternoon so yeah and as I'm going I'm trying to keep as much of the excess as possible so I've got something to hang on to and move about with which kind of makes sense to me because so, some of the books you read they say get rid of the excess as you go so you're only working on what you need but I think having a handle is much much better so I'll just continue <laughs> I don't know if you can see through the haze, I can just about see, but my glasses are completely <laughs> covered up. So I've done um, the cap set and the shop set here. So I've still got the kind of rabbit set to do and the game board or the stands. But I've run out of small pieces so I've got to cut down this which is not ideal but if I go slow and steady I can get it into a ma into manageable size pieces so I've got some I've got all the, the rabbit bits on here as well as the stands so I'll get this done and then I think I'll take a break have some lunch and come back a little bit refreshed okay so I've just got about three quarters of the way through the first cut and I've broken the blade but it was due because I went th I've cut all those other small pieces and not broken it so oh well I'm gonna have my lunch now and then come back and finish this so small delay never mind <coughs> Hock. so I've done most of the the kind of game pieces I've got a couple that are kind of interspersed in the spaces here but get to those as I go along. Now on to the, um, the base parts. But the idea in making this was to have a, uh, a spot where you could put your golden shape, your, um, your target piece, that is relatively stable and everything else is unstable. So minimum of um, flat edges, so there's nowhere to actually lay things flat and none of my shapes are completely flat anyway no matter how you know even if I tried they wouldn't be flat and the other idea is that it just slots into the base which on this one if you could be able to make it out it's, it's, it's just a cut out in the middle it's not a it's not a slot so that was just me being lazy so I've got to drill a hole for those so that's basically the where the idea started to have this just slot in now so on these, again, I'm not sure how this is going to come out, there is zero straight edge. It's all curves, except for kind of the straight bit where the little locking bit is. So that's going to be interesting to cut. So I'm going to take it as slow as possible, slow and steady. So I get the, the uprights done and then do the bases and I'll drill out first and cut the, the slot first so it fits into these. And I can fiddle about with these last little bits of game piece. So, I'm going to just talk about this splinter I've managed to pick up. So, um, I'm gathering a huge pile of dust here, but that is to happen if you don't have a, a shop vac. So, uh, when I've finished I'll be borrowing the hoover from indoors, but in amongst all of this there's a hell of a lot of splinter, because these, this wood is not great. It's a ply or fiberboard or something and this bottom edge is, is awful so because I don't want to curve these over too much, I don't want to round them out I'm going to probably have to fill some, I don't really want to but if I'm going to paint them anyway it doesn't matter but some of these are going to need a hell of a lot of extra filling so let's get on with this I'm deliberately keeping them large so I've got a decent amount of 
wood to hang on to. Right. Note to self and other Scrossel users, if when using a um, spiral blade it starts to sound like an Apache helicopter and starts to chew like that, you've got the blade in the wrong way around. I didn't think you could do that with a spiral, but apparently you can. So I've drilled a centre hole in the slots of all three of these, so I'm now in the process of just cutting that bit out. And I'm going to go inside the line so I can um, file out to make things fit, so it's just slightly laziness, but I'm not very good at straight lines at the minute, so... Okay, so I've had a good sweep down. I haven't um, washed down the top because I'm going to be making some more dust, so I've, I've cleaned it to a point, and now I'm moving on to the sanding stage. So I've got my not Dremel set up in a Dremel um, drill press um, with a sanding drum on on a slightly raised surface here, so I've got some more comfortable height because it's down here, it's not easy to work on. So I've got it set on on the lowest speed. I think that, that that should be plenty for this, but we shall see. So, right, so that has been nearly an hour of no fun, really. I'm not, I'm probably, I'm pretty much sure these aren't intended for wood or, or not for this kind of wood. As you can see in there, the inner layers, it's just burning and it's not really cutting back at all, so I'm going to have to resort to using my detail sander and a hell of a lot of hand sanding which is not going to be fun but oh well moving on um, as for the boxes my intention was to make a box to fit but during the process of sanding I looked through my collection and found the slide top boxes which fit really nicely everything fits in just so that's better, I think, than trying to make one and spending hours doing that and getting it wrong. Because I don't do square for any reason. Things don't come out square, however I try. So I, instead of using the base, I've decided to cut the hole in the in the top here, slot in the top, and just sit the the frame part right, right in. And that's fairly stable. This one's the better one. The other one's a little looser. It might require a little bit of, of packing just to keep it from wobbling too much. But other than that that makes more sense than having a separate stand to me at least so so each of these has now got a box lid with kind of blocks on this should help it to stand upright so I'm now going to move on to the painting and yeah first layer of paint is just going to be an all over cover everything don't worry about the finish it's a much job um, I'm going to only uh, paint a character or paint an image on one side, I'm going to leave the other side blank, so it's easier to play with that way. So I'm going to start with the white stuff, in case I make a spill. So I've put all the bits to go white in a pot here and I've got the cat box and the, the frame for the cat one. I'm not sure what I'm going to paint on those afterwards, but this is good for a start. So here goes. Again, using a little plastic dish for the paint. Saves on washing up because when it, it dries off, it just peels. So, yeah, it's time to get painting. So, we're going to start with these ones that are half and half so that it gives the white at least a chance to dry off a bit before I put the next bit on. Tempted to mask it, but Yes, you will. Yeah, I'll do these and then I'll mask them before I do the black. Seems to make more sense. Okay, so I'm in the process of masking off the handles of these tools before I uh, paint the, the blade black. But I've already done um, the first bit of the character work on the other set. So my little fish, I've got a, a dark blue base coat and then nice uh, fish, uh, fish design on them. Everything else has got a coloured coat on the back. So I've got separated by colour, they're going to have numbers on the back as well when I'm finished. Okay, so you, I didn't show you a lot of the painting processes because it's just ridiculous. 
but I've got to the point where a stack of tool is all but finished except for a, a coat of varnish and it fits nicely in the box so that's a great sign and stack of cat is the most garish looking <laughs> box ever I think I've got a little bit carried away oh well so I've got some bits that need um, crystals for eyes and things like that and I'm now working on the um, milk bottles so piece of dowel cut at that's about four centimeters which is what an inch and a half so I've just got a little uh, sanding drum on here on my um, hobby drill on my little press here I've put some tape down on the top here so everything slides a little easier so the idea is to get everything or do it, do it lefty just to show you to get it against the, the wheel and just turn it like that so that it just brings in like a shoulder for like a milk bottle Actually, that hasn't gone too bad for the first try. So, um, yeah, I'm going to continue with that until they're all done and ready to paint. Well, probably need a quick sand over anyway, but less painful than I was expecting. <coughs> okay, so I've got these shapes and I've given them a, a surface sand. They're not, they're not all even. They're not all precisely the same. But again, none of these shapes are, so I can kind of get away with that. If I had the skill or the opportunity to to do them on the lathe then they're going to be equal and whatever but I think it's fine, it adds to the homemadeness, homemadeness of it right so I'm starting with um, white with a little touch of ochre because milk isn't actually white it's slightly off it's not off but you, know, you get the idea, it's not quite white it's, it's, and it's not as dark as cream so I'm just putting in kind of the end of a of a brush really, just a quick dab just take the, the brightness away from the white and this is probably a little dark but I'm going to do a second coat so the second coat can be slightly lighter or have no white, or have no ochre in it at all so it's just a layer of white so I've got a block here with some blue tack stuff on it and I've pushed a pin into the bottom of each of the or into the top of each of the bottles so I can just place them so in the top is alright because I'm going to do something for the the, um, the caps so I'm just going to get this and see how well it goes on the first time round see how much or if any second coat I need okay so I'm coming up to the kind of final snaggings and pinching off. For my little catnip baggies I've stuck on some glitter because I couldn't find any diamantes or any diamonds that looked good enough I think so that looks more like herb and not the other type of herb. All of my cats have now got a nice pair of sparkly eyes and I'm working on my milk bottles. So they've had two coats of my kind of milky colour so before I'd, I painted them I sanded one face just very slightly so it's not really that obvious but when you find it it will stay on there so that's an easier face for for stacking with for playing with so I'm just going to put a plain number on the bottom near the fours and then to create the the tops I'm just dipping them in some red acrylic come to the end of my blog here so it's going to take a little bit of doing now I want to make sure it's fairly thick so that when it dries and sinks back it will fill in the little the pin hole I left in the top there and I don't want to leave a point a drop because that will form a shape when it's finished so there you go, milk bottles done so that's the cat set is complete 